Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about five things which you shouldn't do in a dual clutch transmission vehicle. Now if you've watched my video on the things you shouldn't do in a manual or an automatic transmission, a lot of you guys were asking you know which of these apply to a dual clutch transmission. So that's what we'll be clarifying in this video and we are in the 2016 Hyundai Tucson which has a seven speed dry dual clutch transmission. So the first one we're going to get into is if you're driving along and you come to a stop, um, some of you guys were asking, should I put the vehicle in neutral? Because you've got a clutch there, and in this case it is a dry clutch, and so you're going to be squeezing up against that clutch, your engine's going to be trying to rotate it, but the clutch can't rotate because it's connected to your wheels, and so you're going to have wear on that clutch. So should you be putting it in neutral? Well, the engineers uh, who developed these cars are smart enough to realize that problem, so what they'll do is, as you're coming to a stop uh, at a certain speed and with a certain amount of brake pressure, they'll automatically disengage both clutches, so your transmission's effectively in neutral, and as a result of this, uh, you're not going to have any uh, wear on your clutch. So if you do come to a stop, you can just leave it in drive, the computer takes care of it, you don't have to put it in neutral, and you won't have any wear on your clutch. Moving on to number two, if you come to a stop on an incline, you shouldn't take your foot off the brake. And in a lot of cases with an automatic transmission, this can be okay to do because if you let your foot off the brake, the torque converter is sitting there spinning anyways, and it has enough torque to just hold the vehicle stationary in place. Well, in a dual clutch transmission vehicle, you're using that clutch pack, which is going to be slipping, and so you're going to be putting unnecessary heat into the clutch pack where, you know, when your foot's on the brake, it's going to disengage that clutch pack and your brakes will hold the vehicle rather than that clutch pack and absorbing all that unnecessary heat and causing unnecessary wear. Now there's a difference too in clutches. For example, this has a dry clutch uh, versus you could have a wet clutch and you can also have single plate versus multi-plate clutches. So multi-plate and uh, wet clutches, they tend to be able to absorb a bit more heat. Um, and then, you know, uh, a single plate or a dry clutch, and they don't necessarily have to be in that combination, uh, but a dry clutch tends to be a bit more efficient. It's gonna rob less power, and they're also gonna tend to weigh less. And so from that standpoint, um, you know, they can be used in both eco cars, such as the vehicle we're in, you know, trying to get that efficiency, uh, but they can also be used in sporty cars because they don't rob power uh, and they weigh less. And so, you know, there are benefits to a dry clutch over a wet clutch, but a wet clutch does tend to be able to absorb a bit more heat uh, without as much wear. And so, you know, of course, they're all designed uh, for their specific scenario. So this is an eco car. You're not going to be driving it super aggressively. And so they take that into mind. But they also, you know, obviously build it so that it's robust enough for whatever, you know, scenarios you could be putting it through. Now, the third thing I want to talk about is try not to spend too much time just inching forward. So you've got your foot on the brake and you're just slowly creeping forward. And in this case, you're not going to be able to fully engage that first gear clutch. And because of that, you're going to have more wear. Now, this is especially true if you are towing or if you're going up a steep incline uh, where you're going to have more resistance to that. And so in these scenarios, or if it's just hotter outside, in these scenarios, you know, you want to try and minimize the time that you spend inching forward because it's trying to engage that clutch, uh, but you don't have enough speed where it can fully engage it, so it has to allow for some slip. Now, these clutches are, of course, made for wear and tear, so it's not like, uh, you know, it can't do it. It certainly can, uh, but if you're looking for the maximum longevity of the clutch, then you want to try and minimize the amount of time you spend inching. Let a gap form in front of you, and then, you know, let yourself move up and let the clutch fully engage, and so that way you're not going to have that slip in there and cause any heat to build up within the clutch pack. Now the next one we're going to get into deals with the logic of the transmission. So you shouldn't downshift while on the accelerator pedal and you shouldn't upshift while on the brakes. And it's not that this is going to cause any harm, but you should understand the logic behind this of why there's going to be a delay uh, because you might get frustrated with your vehicle if you were to do this uh, because it takes a little bit longer for it to shift. So a dual clutch transmission uh, has at minimum two different transmission shafts and one of those shafts is going to have the even gears and the other is going to have the odd gears. And so what that allows it to do with those two clutches is to pre-select one of the gears. Let's say you're in first, it can pre-select second, and then all it has to do is disengage the first uh, clutch and then engage the second clutch. And in doing that, you're already in second gear. So the gear shift only requires a, a change of disengaging and re-engaging a clutch rather than actually shifting uh, that cog for second gear. And so as a result of that, they're very fast, uh, but they have to be able to predict which gear you're going into next. And so that all depends on 
the logic of the ECU and how it's set up. Uh, but for example, a very basic example is that if you're on the brakes, you're slowing down. So that likely means your next step is going to be to downshift versus if you're on the accelerator pedal, you're speeding up. And that likely means your next operation is going to be to upshift. And so in these scenarios, it'll tend to, you know, pre-select the gear that it thinks you're going to use next. And so let's say you're on the highway, you know, you're in fourth gear and someone cuts you off and you're about to shift into fifth because you're at a high enough speed. Well, you hit on the brakes because someone cuts you off and then you shift to fifth. It may think that because you just hit on the brakes, you're probably going to downshift. And so depending on that scenario, it may take longer for it to shift into fifth gear. Another example, you know, coming up to a stoplight, uh, it could be where you're on the brakes and so it's disengaged the clutches altogether and then the stoplight turns green while you're still rolling up to it so you get on the gas and then you experience a delay. Well that delay could be because it thought okay you're coming to a complete stop I can disengage all the clutches but then the light turns green and so now you can go. And so it's kind of critical to understand how a dual clutch transmission works in order to not get frustrated in these situations uh, where it may not behave the way you want it to and it may not behave like a traditional automatic uh, gear box. And this brings us to our final point, which is about launching your dual clutch transmission vehicle. Now, obviously you can cause damage by launching your car and it's not something you should typically be doing, but if you are to do it in a dual clutch transmission vehicle, you're going to put your left foot on the brake, hold that firmly, then you're going to press the gas. And the critical thing here is to just not hold that very long. You want to let go of the brake fairly quickly uh, because you're dumping all of that heat into your clutch if it's starting to engage to try and power the vehicle. Now I asked Hyundai what happens in their vehicles when you put your foot on both the brake and the accelerator pedal in their dual clutch transmission vehicles. And they said the engine speed should rise and the clutch should go to a standby position. The clutch may try to engage and if it identifies no vehicle movement, it should reduce the engine speed and hold that speed until the accelerator pedal is released. So in the scenario of launching your vehicle, Hyundai tries to make sure that you can't damage it by disengaging that clutch and dropping the engine RPM uh, if you hold it for too long. But regardless, you shouldn't hold uh, the brake and the gas too long. So we'll go ahead and test that out. Rises up a little bit, foot off the brake, slow acceleration initially, and then it fully engages. And there's 60. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I think just as important as to understanding, you know, what you shouldn't be doing is understanding why. So I brought some parts along. This is part of a torque converter, and so we're going to be looking at, you know, kind of how mechanically automatic transmission works so that we can better understand uh, why we shouldn't do certain things in them, which I think is just as important as understanding what you shouldn't be doing.